Hello, in this tutorial I would like to show you the principles of how to use AI Developer, a software to train and evaluate neural nets for image classification. Once you start at AI Developer, this screen will appear with a large drag and drop region that allows you to load data easily. AI Developer supports most common formats, including PNG, JPEG and Bitmap. Let us use some images of automobiles and cats whose discrimination could be important during development of self-driving cars. I already organized the images into folders for testing, training and validation. By simply dragging each folder into AI Developer, the content is written to a single HDF5 file. The next time you can directly load the HDF5 file, which will be much faster as HDF5 format allows for very fast data loading. Information of each loaded file is displayed in this table and by double clicking on the file name you can get an example image. Since we want to train a classification model we have to specify which images belong to which class. Let's say automobiles are class 0, cats are class 1 and we use these files for training. The table also shows the total number of images in each dataset. Here we can specify the number of random images from the dataset to train on during each training iteration called epoch. This can be used to balance your training set. In our example the data is balanced meaning there is an equal number of images available for each class and we can switch off shuffling to use all images per epoch. To validate the model after each epoch against different images, we additionally load a validation set. Again, we have to determine the classes and indicate that this is a validation set. As this dataset is balanced too, we will switch off shuffling. For a quick sanity check, the total number of images for each class in training and validation set is displayed in this data overview box. Next, we choose the neural net we want to fit. Several multilayer perceptrons, some smaller convolutional neural nets, and even some modern pre-trained models are available. Let us choose a convolutional neural net with two convolutional layers called Linet, which has some dropout layers added. Dropout layers help to avoid overfitting by randomly switching off nodes in the network during training. The input image size is set to 32 by 32 pixels, matching the original size of the loaded images. Alternatively, AI Developer also allows to adjust image sizes by center cropping. The pixel values in images can range from 0 to 255, but machine learning methods typically train faster when the input values are normalized to single digit values. Therefore, AI Developer offers different normalization methods, for example, division by 255. The number of epochs to train the model can be defined here, which we leave at 2500 for now. The color mode can be set to RGB or grayscale. Let us use grayscale mode. The RGB images of this dataset will automatically be converted to grayscale. Here we can set the location where the trained models will be saved. Let's create a sensible path and file name. The following tab provides options for image augmentation, like random vertical or horizontal flipping, as well as rotation, width shift, height shift, zoom and shear. For this tutorial, let me switch off all these options for now. Furthermore, you can add brightness augmentation by adding or multiplying a random number from a given range to each image. Gaussian noise as well as random contrast changes can be applied as well. Image augmentation using saturation and hue is only applicable for RGB images. 
Again, let me switch off all the augmentation options for now. In the next tab, we can check example images to see the effect of the chosen image augmentation methods. Let us use, for example, a rotation of up to 45 degrees. As you can see, the images are now randomly rotated. But for this tutorial, I would like to start with no augmentation. Now all parameters are defined and we can start the fitting process. Some information about the model is displayed here and the pop-up shows the amount of RAM required to load the dataset. Since I have enough RAM, I can just go ahead and start fitting. Otherwise, I could have unchecked this option to access the data from hard disk only, which prolongs the fitting process significantly. The fitting process is carried out in a parallel thread and is accessed through a dedicated window showing information about the model. Up here you have a plotting region where you can show model metrics, for example accuracy and validation accuracy in real time. In this plot we can already see that the accuracy increases faster than the validation accuracy. This indicates that the model memorizes the training data, a process termed overfitting. Thus, we should pause the training process and review the hyperparameters. You might remember this design from the previous window. All image augmentation parameters are accessible here using the same layout. Let us do some stronger rotation augmentation as well as random zooming, brightness change, as well as addition of noise and contrast augmentation. Identically to the main window, we have access to example images. Here we can directly see the effect of the augmentation parameters we added. Let us apply these settings at the next epoch and continue fitting. By applying horizontal flipping, we can additionally increase the variety in the training set. Each time a new maximum of the validation accuracy or a new minimum of the validation loss is achieved, the model is saved to the chosen directory. Furthermore, there is an Excel file with meta information. This file contains a detailed documentation of the fitting process. First, the used data is listed. Next, there is information about my system and all the hyperparameters which we defined. As you can see, there are already three rows. This is because I changed the hyperparameters two times. One of the columns actually keeps the information at which epoch the new hyperparameters were applied. Lastly, there is a sheet containing the history of the model, including all accuracies, losses, as well as the time and if the model was saved. The history tab in AI Developer actually allows to load such a file. Let us plot accuracy and validation accuracy. Additionally, we can display a rolling median as well as a linear fit within a user-specified region. By plotting only the saved models, we can spot the most accurate ones easily. This model, for example, reaches a validation accuracy of 93.25%. Using this drop-down menu, we have the option to convert our model to a different format, like protocol buffer or ONNX. To assess the model of choice, we have to remember the model index, 
and continue to the Assess Model tab. First, load the particular model in the upper part of the window. Properties of this model are displayed in this box. In order to load testing data, we go back to the Build tab, clear the table and drag in testing data. Label these as validation and switch off shuffling. Back to the Assess Model tab, we have an overview of the loaded testing data. In this table, we can also specify individual names for these classes. In this box, we can calculate the computational time to predict a single image, termed inference time. For our model, the inference time on this computer is roughly 0.94 milliseconds. If we had unlabeled data, we could use this box to classify and export the predictions to an Excel file. Coming back to our testing data, by updating the plots, the chosen model is applied to predict the loaded data. The values in the confusion matrices indicate which images were assigned to which class. By double-clicking on a matrix element, the respective images can be displayed. Furthermore, a table shows a classification report. The confusion matrices as well as the classification report can simply be exported to an Excel sheet. Moreover, you get a probability histogram and you have access to receiver operating characteristic and precision recall curves allowing you to get a deeper insight into the classification performance of your model. Each image or plot in AI Developer can be appended to your clipboard or exported to either PNG or Vector Graphics. This is the end of this tutorial. If you liked it, please consider watching also the next episode, where I will show you how to load your model to apply transfer learning. Bye bye!